Shalom, Barakatha Yahweh, Bah Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Quidash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. Psalms 130 and verse 3. If thou, Lord, Yehovah by Hashem, Yehovah Shah, should have marked iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? When you read the book of Psalms 147 and verse 19, it reads, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statues and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20, he have not dealt so with any nation and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. So when it's according to the statues, laws and commandments of the Most High, the Israelites would be the ones that would be capable of breaking them because they was given unto Moses and Moses gave them unto the children of Israel. All right. The Most High gave the law, statutes, and commandments unto Moses. And our forefather Moses gave it unto the children of Israel. All right. Which is us. So the scripture is asking the question here in verse 3. If thou, Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, should have marked iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? And the answer to that question is no one. Not one Israelite would be able to stand if the Most High would count iniquities. And iniquities is basically being laden with sin or sin upon sin. Verse 4, But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared because the Most High controls your path. And the forgiveness has fell upon the lot of those that have been predestinated to be found in Yahweh Shai. Those that shall be found in Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai blood covers them. Now, when you read the book of Psalms 32 and verse 1, it tells us, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. All right? Because the flesh is wicked. Okay? The flesh is going to go off. Okay? The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The Most High judge an individual by the inner man or inner woman. All right? Not the outer man or the outer woman. So, the Most High will judge your spirit and those that have been predestinated to have a clean spirit or a spotless spirit or a pure spirit. Yahweh Shah blood covers them. Therefore, they're going to be found in Yahweh Shah. All right. Let's read it again. Psalms 32 and verse one again. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered once again. It's going to be Yahweh Shai's blood that's going to cover that sin of that individual. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, imputeth not iniquity because he's going to be found in Yahweh Shai. It says, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When you read the book of Revelation, chapter 14. In verse 1, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him, and that lamb is Yahweh Shai. Okay? And that's how Yahweh Shai shed the blood for those that was predestinated to be found in him. All right? By becoming the sacrificial lamb. All right? The lamb of the Most High. St. John, chapter 1. And verse 29, the next day, John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him and saith, 
Behold, the Lamb of the Most High, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that world is not talking about every individual. It's talking about the world of Israel. Here in these end times, it's only speaking of those that was predestinated to be found in Yahweh Shai, which is the elect of the nation of Israel. Those that walk according to this rule, okay, the Israel of the Most High, those that was chosen from the foundation to be predestinated, all right, or for a new to be found in Yahweh Shah or Yahweh Shah blood to cover them by him becoming the sacrificial lamb. Let's go back to Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Verse 4, this is the point. And verse 5, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the most high and to the lamb. So these are the ones that was predestinated to be found in Yahweh Shah. These are the ones that are predestinated for Yahweh Shah's blood being that sacrificial lamb to cover them. Verse five. And in their mouth, all right, was found no guile, meaning in their spirit, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. Man and woman can throw fault at the elect's feet, all right, but it's not going to stick because what? They are faultless before the throne of the Most High. That goes back into the flesh being weak, all right, but the spirit being willing, okay? So it says, in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. All right? Those are the ones that shall be spotless. All right? Those are the ones that's going back to Psalms 130. And verse 4 describes, it says, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. And these are the ones that shall be forgiven in Revelation, the 14th chapter, all right? Those that shall be found in Yahweh Shai, those that Yahweh Shai blood shall cover them, all right? Because the Most High is about to do the same thing to this modern Egypt as he did to the ancient Egypt. The scripture says here in the book of Second Ezra, chapter 15 and verse verse 10 it says behold my people is led as a flock to the slaughter I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before See, smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. So that lets you know this is talking about the modern day Egypt because he's going to totally annihilate the modern day Egypt. All right. Which is America. OK, it says Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. All right. So just like. The ancient Egypt, the Most High is going to bring plagues and destruction, all right, and terror, evils, okay, upon this Egypt. But if you have the blood of Yahweh Shah covering you, just like in the ancient Egypt, all right, you're going to be protected. The book of Exodus 12, and I'm going to go straight to the point. 
verse 21. It says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it into the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentils and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, all right? So the lentil would be a beam that spans the opening, okay? It could be a door, it could be a window, okay? But in this case, it's a door, okay? And that door represents your mind, okay? Your Where your spirit lies. So you wanna have that blood, all right, on your spirit, covering your spirit, being a protector, all right, over your spirit, a protective hedge, just like our forefather Job had, okay? So when the death angel come, as the scripture says, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of this house until the morning. It says, for the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, all right, so when the Most High send Yahweh Shai, all right, to destroy this modern day Egypt, okay, when Yahweh Shai covering is upon you, if you're wearing the clothing of Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai, you're going to be safe, all right? When that blood is being seen upon you, it says, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, that blood is going to be upon your door. And on the two side posts, all right, all about you. It says the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Okay? So that's the importance of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai's blood. All right? It's going to serve as a protector, a covering. All right. It's going to serve as a banner. OK, it's going to serve as a sign of being on the side of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. All right. In the time of total destruction upon the soils of America. That's the importance of the blood of Yahweh Shai. All right. It's going to forgive you. All right. Or allow you to be forgiven of all of your sins. All right. The sins that you committed against the Most High, the sins that you have committed in all your past lives and the sins that you committed in this life, okay? That's the power of Yahweh Shai's blood. And it's also gonna be a protective covering, all right, in the days to come, okay? And only those that have been predestinated, once again, is gonna receive these blessings. Ephesians chapter one and verse four, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, meaning separate, and without blame, all right? That's those that Revelation the 14th chapter spoke about. No guile in their mouth, all right? Meaning they're going to speak the 100% truth according to the scriptures. It says that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah HaMashiach to himself. So it's all done by Yahweh Shah. It says, according to the good pleasure of his will okay it says to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he have made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace lord willing i pray that this made sense and that this was edifying shalom